Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. After the traditional dinner for a lot of families, it's time for another tradition, football. The Lions have been playing on Thanksgiving since 1934. That's a little history for you. And Matt Stafford, the last two holiday outings has come up big. Jay Cutler trying to right the ship for the Bears this season. Quick slant to Alshon Jeffrey breaks two tackles, Bears up 7-0 early. Calvin Johnson, he's been relatively dormant for the Lions the last three games. Not today. They do not call this guy Megatron for nothing. Check out that wingspan, folks. Put the Lions within three at 14 to 10. Calvin's crew would run away with this one at this point. Second quarter, just 24 seconds to go. They're up 24 to 14 at the half, and the defense only would give up three in the second. They win 34 to 17. Calvin Johnson hit 10,000 career yards receiving today. The fastest player to do so in NFL history. Other NFL action today, Eagles and Cowboys fighting for first in the NFC East. They're both at 8 and 3. That score is 33 to 10 at the time in the fourth. We'll show you all the highlights at 10. Phil, both the men's and women's basketball teams have had success here on this court. Last season, the women went 15 and 1 at the Betty. The men, on the other hand, they won four straight home opener so I got to talk to both head coaches earlier to find out what it is about being at home that leads to big wins. Well a lot of it has to do with our fans being here. Our play consistently regardless of who we're playing, who the opponent is, just respecting the game, respecting the opponent. The opponent tonight for UND will be Mayville State. It's a team they're familiar with. They've gone 25 and 2 against the Comets at home. You can catch the highlights of that game and the women's game at 10 on WDAZ Sports. Here at the Cavalier home field, the temperature is 20 degrees and there's snow on the ground. But here at the Alaris Center on Friday, weather won't be a factor. However, playing indoors makes it a whole different ball game. And when I asked coach about the win streak and if there's any added pressure to make it 21 in a row on Tuesday, he simply laughed, smiled and said, what streak? Reporting from East Grand Forks, Kate Longenecker, WGAZ Sports. Thanks, Brad. Last year when these two teams played, Woodward won that game 6-2. to two. The reason for that score, well, they actually had an intentional safety at the end of the game because the defense was playing so well. And defense really could be the name of the game this week, guys. Two players to watch for Woodward, Jamar Russell. He's a senior defensive end. He's a guy that has the ability to make plays. Very athletic player. For Rodgers, on the other hand, you've got Walter Boykin, a cornerback, who he's a very smart player. He watches a lot of game film. Really understand the game and they're both players to watch in a game that could really come down to defense again. Wake Borders fly high on the mommy. A tennis player and her family grow up right before our eyes on BCSN and a new rivalry is born in football. My name is Kate Longenecker and a new episode of The Light Side starts right now. Hello and welcome to The Light Side. My name is Kate Longenecker and I'm going to be your host and I'm here at the Stroh Center in Bowling Green because tonight's episode, it's all about the Falcon cheer and dance teams and the cheer team. They just did something that they've never done before. Here's Greg Frankie with more. So what's it like to call over 5,000 baseball games? Well, Jim Weber has done just that, and he's done it for so long and done so well that he recently got inducted into the International League Hall of Fame. I asked them to take me back to 1975, where it all began. Thanks, Greg. Down here, guys, it is very brisk. It's about 46 degrees, but with the wind chill, it's actually about 38. I got to tell you, too, it's very windy down here, about 20 miles per hour. There was actually sleet earlier. We'll see how it affects the passing game of both of these offenses today. Thanks, Greg. For a couple of hours, those kids become the heroes and what everything is about in these two communities, and that's what's important. That's what mommy coach Mark Gibson told me when I asked him about the significance of the ding dong bell. Guys, I can tell you it is so important to both sides on the field tonight and I'll tell you all about it throughout the broadcast. Thanks, Eric. Last week, obviously, Scott, a huge win over Start, and they were very excited. The running back, Kevin Banks, afterward quoted on the blade. He said, we've got the city championship now. It's a wrap. What did Bowser do? Well, in response, they posted that quote on their lockers. They used it in the scouting report to let the guys know to drive them this week in practice to beat Scott. Obviously, it's a must win for Bowser today if they want to defend their city league title, and the energy level really shows that right now, guys. Thanks, Greg. Just talked to the head coach of Buffalo, Coach Quinn. He told me that defensively, they really just want to tighten some things up. Offensively, very happy with the performance of the offensive line. Obviously, for returning seniors, you can see it by the way they were paving the way. 
for Taylor. And he also said, right now it's just completing the game. They really want to have a good fourth quarter and finish this thing out. Thanks, Greg. It's no question that Mommy has had some offensive issues this season. And one of the reasons why is because they haven't had the same core group of guys. They've been rotating guys in and out. And one of those situations was rotating Brian Utter, who was the starting quarterback this season, to Jordan Spellis. Now for Spellis, he's a great pocket passer, great arm. He is a baseball pitcher, but one of the issues that they've had is their offensive line. When the offensive line struggles to give him enough time, his receivers can't get open, and that's exactly what happened in the loss last week to Bowling Green. So for them tonight, the key is going to be keeping the offensive line in check and giving him the amount of time that he needs. Thank you. I did just talk to Central Catholic head coach Greg Dempsey. He said that he's very happy with how the defense has performed in the first half, but he said he doesn't want to give St. John's any spark. They get the ball first. He wants his defense to come out strong right now. And I asked him if he's going to pull any starters like he did last week against Finley. He said no. It's getting close to playoff time. These guys need to get their work in now. Bisky, Kate. Thanks, Eric. You said earlier that you guys are going to be blitzing often, and that really seemed to be effective in the first half and forcing them to make some passes that they just didn't want to throw. Oh, absolutely. I mean, but they're still athletic. They're Thanks, Greg. And with Jerry Kramer, a famous Green Bay Packer offensive guard kicker, you're here because your grandson plays for Southie. What's it like for you to see Miles Magnus play out here? It is a huge thrill. Let's think back to your NFL days. You played under Vince Lombardi. That's who I think of when I think of the Green Bay Packers. Tell me what it was like to be coached by him. You were also in the famous Ice Bowl. I got to ask you about that. What can you remember from that game? Thanks, Mason. Here with head coach Mike Daniels. Last week, your defense held Marion Harding to seven. This week, they've held start, shut them out in the right. first half. What have you seen from your defense in the last two games? They're playing lights out. They, they're being aggressive. Thanks, Greg. Dominic Orsini, over 150 rushing yards, 150 passing yards. Credit you with five touchdowns tonight. I noticed in this game, in the first half, you guys had the momentum. Then going into the second half, it seemed to slow down a little bit. Coming out in the second half, still a little bit slow. And then something changed. Can you tell me what that was? Yeah, we just uh, came together as a team. So. Certainly a special team. I think something that really stuck out was the play of your offensive line, which really seemed to open up the run game for you. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, the, the big. You're up 28 at half. You know they're going to be throwing the ball in the second half. Does the defensive strategy change at all? Well, I think it has to. we got to play more cover. Thanks, Mason. Toledo quarterback Terrence Owens. Great game for you tonight. Eight for 14, 375 yards. Why were you so effective in the air tonight? I mean, like just, just like in practice, at, uh, like all, all we can practice. We, um, re what can you say about the performance of your wide receivers? Oh, yeah, our wide receivers, they caught the ball pretty good. And also, how big is it for you guys that Kareem Hunt has stepped up the way that he has the last three weeks? Oh, yeah, he's, uh, Kareem Hunt, he stepped up tremendously. That just flew up. What can you guys take from this game that you can use against Buffalo next week? I mean, just just take. Well, thank you for the time. Five championships, two Super Bowls. I really appreciate the time you took with us today. Hey, thank you. It's been a pleasure being with you. Back up to you guys. Well, if you... Turned, tuned in to watch this game, you just got your money's worth. Ohio State and Michigan has become one of the biggest rivalries in all of sports. And you see it everywhere around here. People wearing the Ohio State and Michigan colors, even in the off season. And from that rivalry stems a new one, the border classic that pins the best of Michigan against the best of Ohio at Donnell Stadium in Finley. As tensions rose before the inaugural game, Team Ohio's head coach Mike Fell talked about putting players together from rival teams and why the All-Stars were motivated to leave it all on the field. Oh, you know, you grew up that way. When you're in Ohio, you grow up and you hear about the team up north. And so uh, it, it's easy to have a pep talk today. There isn't going to need to be a pep talk because they're ready to play and they, they want to beat Michigan because it's bragging rights for the whole state. Michigan head coach Mike Sadebski said the players were getting pumped up for practice throughout the week. They like to compete, so the practices have been very competitive. Um, these kind of kids like right here, they, they want to win, so they were willing to make sacrifices when we had three meetings in the, during the winter. Uh, one in the winter, you know, one more in the spring, one in between right there. We got together, got the kids together and practiced. And that's asking a lot of a kid coming from Traverse City, Grand Rapids, you know, from all around the state to centrally locate three times. Several Division I recruits were out on the field and many knew each other as teammates or someone they competed against in the fall. But one relationship stood out between two future Ohio State players. For Marshawn Lattimore and Eric Smith, playing on the same team is something they've done since the age of 13. And when it came time to decide where to play at the next level, after finishing up at Cleveland Glenville, it wasn't much of a decision. They were going to continue both of their careers donning the scarlet and gray. It was always a dream, really, just to play football on the next level with each other. And guys like Worley, uh, Cordell Jones, Bogart, people from 
Clifford that's still at Ohio State. So just, you know, continuing that, it's just a good feeling, especially with Marshawn. So. You know, we've been real close friends for some years now, so, you know, we just wanted to end up at the same school together and play together and keep it going. What's more interesting than the friendship is the fact that Cleveland Glenville has produced high caliber players for years. And in the last 17 years, 19 of those players have chosen OSU. These elite athletes stem from the staff setting them up for success. The dream that I said before, like you grow up in Cleveland, Ohio State and Glenville is really the main attraction. And, you, and with that in your mind, you just work and you really like it's work. Like and then you fall from Glenville Titans as a mini league football team. Then it's Glenville Tar Players, then it's Ohio State, so it's kind of tradition, really. Coaches and Coach Ginn, he he a real nice guy, and he just develop players and get them ready for life, you know. And um, that's really it. Just the coaches, yeah, they're great. The coaching has paid off for the Pals, and ironically, the two could be competing for the same position at OSU. Lattimore poised to play either cornerback or wideout, while Smith is listed as a defensive back. The next day after the Classic, they were both on the bus down to Columbus getting ready for the fall season. I'm pretty sure they're going to be intense, so I had to be ready. But uh, I report down tomorrow, actually, um, 8 in the morning. So I had to be ready, like, right at the game, uh, shoot back up to Cleveland, pack all my things. So I'm going to be ready, though. Now back to the game. In front of a stadium full of fans, Team Michigan showed that practice paid off, winning rather convincingly 27-14. to for its first year, the Border Classic was a success for the fans and the players who got to participate. But as for whether it becomes a tradition, only time will tell. For any hockey player, there are certain expectations when going from college to pro, but for two new Walleye additions, their last name is a lot to live up to. Chris Chelios in overtime! 1,651 games played, three Stanley Cups, one Olympic medal, and two sons who were playing hockey at Michigan State just three weeks ago who are now playing for the Toledo Walleye. This is only a glimpse at NHL Hall of Famer Chris Chelios' history, so how much pressure is it for his sons to make their own? Yeah, I think maybe outside, definitely, um, just because you see the name Chelios on the back of the jersey and, uh, you know, you're kind of wondering what Chris's sons are like and all that stuff. But uh, in terms of the guys in the locker room and stuff like that, I don't, I don't think anybody thinks anything differently anymore. I don't think so. I mean, that's all we've really ever known. Um, at this point, our lives are pretty used to it. So obviously, it's not something you want to look at as a negative. It's a positive. So uh, no, it's never been. I mean, maybe when we were smaller, there's a little bit more pressure. But as we gotten older, we kind of made our own name. These brothers have already begun to make their own name. They both posted over 50 points for Michigan State. And they've already made an impression on Toledo head coach Dan Watson. Dean's a smart, smart player. He's the forward. Uh, you know, he's he's tenacious on pucks. He's got a good stick. He's he's disrupted a lot of plays already uh, in, in the two games that he's played. Um, Jake, he's a mobile. He's got good vision back there as a defenseman. He makes a smart plays. He's a good passer. Uh, a lot of upside to both of them. Of course, Chris Chelios was at the Huntington Center for Jake and Dean's first walleye home game, but he offered them both some different advice. He just said to play, play my game, play with confidence before, and uh, you know, you'll adapt and then Afterwards, he said I played well and, and just keep going and, and be adjusted and make sure I'm working hard uh, during the week to get ready for this weekend's games. Keep playing simple. Um, don't try to do too much. Uh, obviously, you work hard every day and just try to stay in that lineup. For now, the siblings are looking to write their own history with one goal in mind, to make it to the NHL. Reporting from the Huntington Center, Kate Longenecker, Sports Nightly. Meetings this year and a shot, they score! Jake Chelios!